The month of February ushers in Black History Month. Come with us now as we explore five ghost towns established by African Americans. Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of Midwest Ghost Town. And this one, we shed light on African American history, diving a little deeper into the towns created, platted, and established by African Americans. And the history here is deep, takes us back to the late 1800s. Now, originally, this was supposed to be an episode about Nicodemus, Kansas, but we had some technical difficulties on that one, so we'll return to Nicodemus here later this week. But consider this a two-for-one. But for now, let's focus on five other ghost towns that, like Nicodemus, were settlements, townships, and areas founded by black pioneers and settlers. A little disclaimer on this one, a couple of these are considered more neighborhoods and annexed into other cities like Tulsa and were marked more for historical reference and not necessarily a zero population ghost town. If you've had a chance to watch any of my ghost town documentary series titled The Top 5, which you can find on YouTube on Midwest Ghost Town, you'll get a chance to see some of the short videos that I did with those uh, states pointing out the top five ghost towns of those states. I had some questions about those videos. How come you only do five? Great question. We know that there are typically more than five ghost towns in a state, but I wanted to make a short video highlighting just a few and taking about one minute on each town, keeping it light and moving around that five minute mark, hopefully holding the viewer's attention by keeping it shorter. Little did I know that as I produced those videos that some of those would become pretty popular. Other questions that I would get would range from, how come you didn't talk about this ghost town? Or what about this ghost town? And the short answer is, I want to include stories about many different ghost towns, but sometimes those stories are hard to find. Or it takes more time uh, doing the research and so forth. And of course, sometimes, or I should say a lot of the time, the listener or viewer, like you, simply know more, have more experiences with certain places, and have unique stories to add. In those cases, I like to draw on Midwest Ghost Town as a community. This leads to today's podcast. There are a lot more than five ghost towns established by African Americans, or I could call them all black towns, settlements, colonies, and on and on. You can do a short history dive on the subject, and you can find a huge collection of these places, which I feel fits nicely with Black History Month. Some of these stories are hard, the story of emancipation, the conclusion of the Civil War, the migration of black families looking for a new life, new freedom, moving and pioneering out west to take advantage of homesteading and gaining of land. But we're going to go into each short story on each of the five. But it's important to realize there is much more to the story. Each one of these deserves a documentary to themselves. And we can certainly return to these at a later date. But for now, let's get into it. Number five, Buxton, Iowa. I included a short history of Buxton in my video, Top Five Ghost Towns in Iowa, and there are pictures included on that as well, taken from the public domain. Buxton was more of a multi-ethnic community, but was considered a black man's town, simply because of the overall number of black citizens and workers living in the town. The black families significantly outnumbered any other racial group with Buxton, reaching a population over 5,000. Buxton was a complete coal mining success town. As the community boomed and supplied the area with coal, which was founded in 1895, it was driven by the Chicago and Northwestern Railway, who in turn needed the coal for its own trains. By 1900, the thriving Buxton became the largest coal mining town west of the Mississippi. It was also the largest unincorporated city in the nation. Now mark that down, that's really interesting. This is unbelievable if you stop to think about it. That a little coal mining town being the largest in the country and in Iowa. The striking thing about Buxton was that even though there was a mixture of races within the town, there wasn't segregation, which was amazing because of the time period. Buxton was a town that literally beat to its own drum. No segregation, little racial discrimination. They had their own baseball team called the Buxton Wonders, and in reality, it was a wonder. 
but like any boom or bust town. As the supply of coal began to fade, so did Buxton. In 1914, coal reached its peak and African Americans began to leave the town. Large fires destroyed parts of the town and by 1919, only 400 people remained. A lot of the mines around the area were closed or had diminishing coal supplies. And in 1927, Buxton Mine Number 18 was closed, ending the life of Buxton. The Chicago and Northwestern ceased operations in 1935, and the tracks were removed. A few structures remain today, but for the most part, Buxton has been reclaimed slowly by the land. Number 4. Blackton, New Mexico Blackton became New Mexico's first black community when Frank Boyer, a young black man from Georgia, was encouraged by his father to head west, young man, to escape death threats from the Ku Klux Klan. In 1896, he traveled to New Mexico on foot, and within five years of his establishment, Blackton began to thrive with a 300 population, hosting a bunch of different businesses, a newspaper, a general store, and a Baptist church. But the 1920s were unkind to the small New Mexico town. Leading to the Great Depression, crops began to fail, and in 1916 was the precursor for the events when worms infested the crops. Closely following this was the natural wells drying up, depleting the town's water supply. Settlers began to leave, and soon Blackton began to fade into history of New Mexico. Once a healthy town sitting on 15,000 acres of land, now barely recognized with a historical marker, marking its existence. Number three, Rosewood, Florida. A story that should be remembered, not to glorify or to highlight something as to make a negative point, but to tell the truth so we never forget. Learn from the past and try to diminish hate. The history is unfamiliar and therefore must be told. You can learn more of the violent details simply by Googling Rosewood, Florida. This story needs to be remembered. New Year's Day, 1923. There was a young white girl who, after being attacked by a white man, falsely accused an unnamed black man. The event would go down in history as the launching point for what is considered the worst race riot in U.S. history. As a band of white men searching for the suspect grew into a violent mob, covering the span over a week of violence, this mob came upon the town of Rosewood and systematically burned every black-owned building and household. Black families never returned, and it still marks one of the largest violent displacements in African American history. The number of those killed still are unknown. The Rosewood Massacre led to the complete destruction of the rural black town, an African American ghost town, not created by a natural disaster to railroad or a boom or bust mining situation, but caused by the violence of racist hate. There's a website, rememberingrosewood.org. I'll go ahead and I'll put that in the description box below. This offers pictures and oral history and other stories and history behind Rosewood. The foundation behind this website offers scholarships for undergraduates who are descendants from the black families affected by this massacre, and today Rosewood is marked by a historical marker. Number two, Greenwood, Oklahoma. Though not a ghost town, it's highly linked to Rosewood, Florida, due to the massive riots at each place. Greenwood, recognized as more than just a town, but was seen as a prominent business area of African American business around the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. Greenwood was known as the Black Wall Street and was burned to the ground during the Tulsa Race Massacre where between 75 and 300 were killed, hundreds injured, and over 5,000 left homeless after the fire destroyed their homes. Like Rosewood, Florida, it's considered along with it as one of the largest race-related massacres in American history. When Oklahoma became a state in 1907, it provided hope to black settlers, giving them a chance to try and leave lands of racism and hate behind, giving them new hope. They traveled there with wagons, horses, trains, and foot. 
Black businessman J.B. Stratford arrived in 1899 and believed that black people had a better chance if they pooled their resources together. So he bought large pieces of land and sold them exclusively to other black men. He ended up building the Stratford Hotel, which was the largest black-owned hotel in the U.S. And there were more businessmen to follow, marking black wealth and prominence in the area, marking it Black Wall Street. But that was soon to all come crumbling down by the Tulsa Massacre. It all started with a black shoe shiner named Dick Rowland. He was accused of assaulting a 17-year-old white girl named Sarah Page. He was later arrested and rumors that he was to be lynched began to spread around the city. As hundreds of white men began to gather outside the jail, they were met by 75 black men armed and ready to protect Rowland. As the sheriff arrived, he successfully persuaded the groups to disperse and go home. But as the groups were leaving, an older white man approached a black man that was leaving and demanded that he give him his pistol. After the man refused, there was a struggle and the gun went off. It sparked a riot between the two groups, with each firing gunshots on the other. By the time the gunfight had ended, ten white men and two black men were dead. Later that night, another mob formed and white rioters attacked Greenwood, killing more men and burning stores and homes. 10,000 black families were left homeless and about 2 million in property damage. Number 1. Nigton, Texas Ranking ghost towns, like I mentioned earlier, is almost like ranking food items. There isn't an exact order, and of course, different things are considered more popular than other. But Nigton deserves a place on this list, as do many others. The small Texas town was established for free African Americans in 1873, becoming a growing farm community with a post office, sawmill, cotton gin, wagon maker, and three churches, all by 1896, growing to a population of 500. It was the largest black community in its Texas county by the 1930s. Nigton's churches were active, and they had plenty of activities for their residents, including a Negro business league in their town. But like other towns in this area, people began to move away in search of better job opportunities, dropping its overall population to 10 people, and finally slipping away into Texas ghost town history. Today, Nigton can be considered a near ghost town or a living ghost town with a surviving population around 87. The churches, cemetery, and family farms are all that remain of that colony today. More of Midwest Ghost Town right after this. Hello, Midwest Ghost Town community, and welcome new visitors and listeners. Welcome to Midwest Ghost Town. This is Dan. If you're new to the channel, we are simply glad to have you here. Feel free to follow along on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube or direct from our website, which is MidwestGhostTown.com, MidwestGhostTown.com. But if not, and you just like to listen to a few, it's all good, and I'm just honored that you are here. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Dan. I'm your host, and like I always say, We are a community here at Midwest Ghost Town. We like to ask questions, drop comments, email. If you like to as well, you can email me, MidwestGhostTown at gmail. And if you have stories or other ghost town suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. I'll, of course, give you a shout out. One last thing. Sometimes we go outside of the Midwest. We cover all abandoned and ghost town history. And for us, it's more about the stories. We might be aware of a place, a town, a site, but What about the people who lived there, who died there, who left their legacy, their story? And if we can find those stories, we love to tell them. Just one small part of what we're doing here. Doing our best to keep history alive. All right, back here at Midwest Ghost. I'm excited about next week's podcast. I feel in some ways that I'm echoing what I said last week because I was supposed to launch the story behind the historical site. Nicodemus this week, but like I said earlier, due to some technical difficulties, we were a little delayed on the project. I was going to finish it up and wrap it up here by Saturday, 
But I'll just tell you right now that someone gifted me some tickets to the Eagles concert in Omaha, Nebraska. And so you know what? I went to the Eagles concert. (laughs) And so I'm going to give you a two for one this week. Here comes, we're going to have, of course, these five um, ghost towns. And we're also going to have Nicodemus coming up as well. Tune in this coming week as well as we dive into the story of Nicodemus, Kansas, the oldest and only remaining black settlement west of the Mississippi River. And I can't wait to share it with you. This is not really considered a ghost town as much as it's considered a historical place. There is that element to it. But the history of this place is what's really most important here. And we want to make sure that we're shining a light on, especially in the month of February with Black History Month. So some good things coming up. And we want to make sure that we keep you in tune with those things. So in closing, as we go over those ghost towns again, or the near ghost towns or the historical ghost towns of black history, Nickton, Texas, Greenwood, Oklahoma, Rosewood, Florida, Blackton, New Mexico, and Buxton, Iowa. Of course, we know there's many more stories and maybe this is something that we'll kind of continue each year as we respectfully shine a light on Black History Month in February. But these towns, really the history, like we said, is really striking on that. If any of you have more stories that you'd like to share on any of those towns that I just shared, love to have that conversation with you. Go ahead and drop a comment in either the podcast or the YouTube channel. Again, love to hear anything about that. Stories, personal stories, you know, thoughts on that as well. Like I said on this one, we are a community here at Midwest Ghost Town. We love to kind of share those things as we go ahead and focus on ghost town history and abandoned history here. But until next time, let's keep history alive. This is Midwest Ghost Town. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time